Okay, hi everyone. I just wanted to put together this video to show how to yank samples from the internet and import them into your HPD20. I actually made a video very similar to this a few months ago where we were taking samples off of a plugin XO, XO Online, and um, that was a free process. Just to sort of download it, import it into the HPD20, and I talked a little bit about how to change it from 24-bit to 16-bit. Going to do the same thing today, except it's going to be a different website. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at here is we're going to go to this website. It's called BandLab. Dot com all right so on bandlab.com they're going to want you to sort of create an account first things first we're going to go to the page bandlab.com start the profile like i said and then up here you see right here with the uh, four little dots okay you see my cursor there on the screen tap on that we're going to go down to sounds and that's going to open up this page here so for the sake of today, we'll just go to packs and then over here in the search, you can just kind of type in anything you could possibly think of with your wildest imagination, like trains, um, dogs, thunder, uh, or just keep it simple. Keys, guitar, bass, um, you know, kicks, whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to actually pick a genre. So I'm going to type in Afro jazz. Afro jazz. Okay, there we go. So here's a bunch of different packs for uh, what they consider to be in the realm of Afro jazz. You know, you just kind of hit the view more and it's going to show you something like 15 packs. Each one of these packs is like a couple of dozen different samples. So we scroll down here. All of these are all samples that share the same theme. You just want to pick out something you like. Um, so like I said, for the sake of today, we are going to just pick out one and move forward with that. Uh, let's see, I don't know. Um, let's go into something like a, a guitar. Okay, you got bongas, congas, sub bass. Got a little guitar line right here. here to this little uh, download icon and you just download it all right okay stick around and I'll show you what's next here's the file that we downloaded all right I have this just sitting on my desktop basically this is the sample right here so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna check out the properties but what we're interested in is going to details. You see right here, 2304 KBPS. Now, it's not always going to be this way. Sometimes the samples are gonna come off and it's gonna say 1411 KBPS. In that case, you can go right from here, right into the HBD 20. 1411 KBPS is 16 bit and that is what the HPD-20 uh, accepts. Otherwise, it's going to say unsupported format. So anyway, here we have this 2304 KBPS, it's a 32-bit, I think it's actually a stereo sample even. So um, it's very easy to convert this down to 16-bit, and while we're in there, we're also going to add a little volume to it. So this is how we do it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use a uh, software called Audacity. You just go to audacityteam.org, okay? Free, open source, cross-platform audio software. It's awesome. So this is what it looks like. You're going to install that if you don't already have it. And when you open it up for the first time, you're going to get this sort of pop-up window that just kind of tells you what's new inside. Audacity, just click OK. 
All right, now this is where the magic happens, right? We've got this empty blue field. So what we have to do is drag our sample over into the blue field. So here it is on my desktop. I'm just gonna left click, drag it right over here. And there it is, right? So now we can close this, get rid of it. And this is the waveform. This is what we're actually gonna be putting into the HPD 20. So what we have to do, you can see right here, it says stereo, 48,000 uh, Hertz, 32 bit floating. Those last two things, they're not gonna work for the HPD 20. Now, like I said, it's not always gonna be this way. Some samples on band lab are already 16 bit, some are 24 bit. Most of them are actually mono. Um, the HPD 20 will accept both stereo and mono, but in this particular case, it's stereo. So anyway, moving forward, first thing we gotta do is select this track. All I did was I tapped on it right there. Now we're gonna go up here to, um, let's see, tracks, and we're gonna go down to resample. So right here, it's reading 48,000. We wanna change that to 44,100. All right, 44,100. That is uh, the rate that the HPD 20 will recognize. Click OK. But wait, there's more. Even down here in the bottom left corner where you see it says project rate 48,000, you want to change that also to 44,100. Okay. So that's pretty simple. All right. Now, the next step we're going to do is we can see these waveforms. We have a lot of room here that we could actually raise the volume a little bit. So while we're in here with Audacity, we're going to go over to Effect, and we're going to go to Amplify. So right now, it's reading it as 5.669, okay? We're only going to add a couple of points to this. Okay. It is very sensitive. You might think that you want to add 10 or 15 or whatever, but actually, you just want to add two, all right? So. And it doesn't have to be exact. So 5.669, we're gonna delete that. We're gonna raise it up to, I don't know, 7.2. All right, now watch the waveform when I click OK. There you go. So we're still within the range of the field, um, so there's not gonna be any problems with clipping or anything like that. So I'd say it looks pretty good. So this is how you do it. You go up to File, go down to export so we click on export we go over to export as wave so by default right here it's going to want to put it inside of an audacity folder inside your documents folder on your computer but you can just scroll down and select your USB stick it just you know makes it a little faster for you so here's the file name, it's saving as a wave, and down here is the magic sauce, right? Signed 16-bit PCM. That's what we want. So we click save. Now here's something interesting that I touched on a video I made doing this from XLN's XO plugin. That plugin, when you download samples, it's got a bunch of metadata inside it it'll say something like track title or track number just a bunch of like text that you would see here fortunately in our case today there's nothing there so we don't really have to worry about it but if you do download a sample and you go to convert it and you get to this point right here and you see any kind of text written uh, descriptive text you want to hit clear okay if you don't clear out the metadata then when you put it into the hbd 20 the HBD 20 is going to kind of read it, not understand it, and then it's going to say unsupported format. So that's why you'd want to clear it out. Not here today, not our concern. So now we hit OK. And there it goes. That's all, that's all you got to do there. And now it is on my USB stick. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, so before we eject our USB stick from our computer, I just want to show you um, how it changed over to 16-bit. Uh, so right now I have it sitting on my USB stick, USB drive F here in this case. 
We're gonna open that guy up. It's the only file I have on this USB stick. All right, and that's important. You don't want to put a USB stick into your HPD 20 that has a bunch of you know different files and stuff. It will confuse it. Anyway, so here it is, the one file. Anyway, right clicking. Uh, we're gonna go down to properties. We're checking out the properties of this file, right? So, uh, nope, that's not it. Let's try this again. I'm gonna right click on the actual file and properties. We got 139 megabytes. We go up to details, 1411 kbps. That is the magic number. That is 16 bit. So we're good to go. Okay, so here we are at a final step of importing samples from BandLab over into our HPD 20. So what I did was I put the final converted 16-bit file onto a USB stick. It doesn't have to be a crazy large USB stick. I mean, as you saw for yourself, the file sizes are very small. And uh, I don't know if there is a maximum size limit for a USB stick in the HPD 20, but at any rate, the one I'm using is a SANS disk, eight gigabyte. So I put that on the stick, ejected it. Now I got it into the back of the HPD 20. And then this is what we're gonna do for importing it. We're gonna hit menu. Then we're gonna use the cursor buttons and go down to user instrument, enter. And right there you see it says import. So here is the one file. Now if you had multiple files, it would be listed all the way down the screen and you could scroll down and check them out with the cursor buttons. Since we only had the one file here, we're gonna hit preview so we can uh, check it out. Right? There it is, pretty simple. So we just hit import and it's going to be the 50th, 50th sample that we have. We just hit execute. Now import it. All right, so we're good to go. So now we just exit out. Let's just go back to, you know, whatever. Um, what you wanna do here is just kinda pick where you want it. You know, you could go into uh, any one of these kits. Um, if you wanted to make a whole brand new kit, you could just go all the way towards the end and just choose a, an empty bank. Okay, so let's walk through how to put this onto our kit. We've already imported it. Uh, we've imported the sample. So now we're just going to pick somewhere to put it on our HPD 20. So I already put it on this pad right here just to uh, make sure it works. So there was a few little issues I ran into that I'm going to show you right now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to instrument. We're going to hit enter. And then we'll hit the pad on this kit that you want to put it on. All right. So I should have said earlier, you can pick, you know, any of these kits and put it wherever you want, or you could go to user kit and build a whole brand new kit of nothing but samples. All right. So I covered that in my last video with the uh, XLN XO HPD 20 breathe new life, something like that. So I'm going to pick this one main room and right. So I'm gonna put it right here on this pad. So we'll hit menu, we'll go to instrument, hit enter. And then we're gonna choose the pad that we wanna put the sample on. All right. So the knob right here, this is the, um, you know, the scrolling knob. You can see probably here that it's scrolling through all of the samples. We're gonna pick the one, you know, we could do that or, you know, whatever. So in some cases, it's gonna start you all the way back to the beginning. And if you wanna go all the way to the right or to the end, you just hold down the shift button while you're turning this button 
and it'll skip like 10, 20, 30 as opposed to one by one. So this is a sample I downloaded from Band Lab the other day. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so for the sake of uh, sticking with uh, what we are doing today, we'll go with the Afro House guitar line. So we're going to put that right there. All right. You could hear it change pitch by how hard I pushed on that. So I don't know, that's pretty interesting. So really that's all you have to do. Now the problem that I ran into was once I backed out and came into just the main screen, it was cutting my sample off um, because it was sitting on a uh, fixed velocity was off. All right, so it was literally reading by how hard I hit my finger on this pad would be not only how loud the sample would be, but how long it would play it. And I just want the sample to play at full volume through the entire sample. So what I had to do was I had to go into menu and uh, let's see, it was menu and then instruments. And I had to go into first I hit edit I think volume by default was at 90. I scrolled that up to 100. And um, nothing else in here I touched. All right, so we'll go to setup. For layer, I have off. Now fixed velocity by default was off. I just moved that one click to the left and changed it to 127, all right? Then you want the mute group to be off. All right, so I have mono poly. I selected it as mono. It doesn't matter. You can have it as poly if you want. All right, so we're going to back out of that. Now, the next thing I want to do, only because this particular sample is longer, it's not like a snare or a kick, I want to go into kit and I want to hit um, pad control. For send, it's pressure. For receive, I had to change the mute to off. Pitch is plus 200. Uh, that doesn't really matter here. We wanna go into kit parameter. I changed kit volume up to 100. Now, the trick was um, increasing the pad sensitivity. Okay. See this little slider right here? By default, it's gonna be right in the middle. Um, it's like saying if you're going to be hitting that with your hand, you want to kind of decrease the sensitivity. If you're going to be just tapping it with your finger, you want to increase the sensitivity. All right. So when you're in the mix of playing the full kit and you're just tapping a guy with your finger, that, that matters. So I'm just sliding it all the way over to as far as it'll go to the right pad sensitivity. All right. And that's it. And then also in here, you can um, do things like change the name of the kit or whatever. So there we have it. So. Right. So that's pretty much it for this. It's not exactly the best sample that I would have chosen, but, uh, you know, I just picked something quickly. There are certainly a lot of awesome samples on BandLab. So definitely go check it out. Check out the packs um, on the uh, sort of introductory thumbnail of each pack. You'll see a play button. If you click on that play button, it plays a song with all of the samples in it. So that'll give you a pretty good idea of what you can expect. And then all of those samples are broken up individually. Mm -hmm.